Hello friends and welcome to this crochet tutorial where we are going to create this four-eyed potato monster. He has longer arms and he has his feet with a pair of pants. You'll notice here he has four eyes and a pair of teeth. So come join me and make this no sew beginner friendly as I take you through the stitches and the application of the eyes to making this four eyed potato monster. Let's get started. The materials and the tools that we will be using to create our four eyed potato monster is we will need some um, brown color yarn. Through the process of making this one, I am using blanket yarn. This particular yarn is through Ogo, which is by Yarnspirations. We have some blue yarn, which is by Burnett Blanket. Black, this will be for the mouth and the eyebrows. And white for the teeth. The hook size that we will be using is a seven millimeter crochet hook. If you're interested, this one is by Clover, which I think works wonderfully on blanket yarn. It is made of plastic, but it goes through it smoothly. A pair of snippers, a tapestry needle, stitch marker, and we will be using safety eyes. The safety eyes that we will be using have the black pupil in the center of the eye. These are 24 millimeter. I have four of them with their safety backing. What makes these eyes a little bit different is the discs that we will be using under the eyes. This one is the 24 millimeter that comes with the eyes when you order them. And this is a 44 millimeter that you can cut out or just go ahead and make it just about an eighth of an inch larger than the 24 millimeter cutout that you have. This is a lightweight vinyl and this is also on a vinyl, like a marine backing. I have two colors. I have purple and pink. I think you can see it and they have this nice holographic glow to them as well. Before we begin I'd like for you to pull out an ample amount of yarn so that way you can have the proper tension as you crochet along and when your yarn runs out pull out some more so that way you don't have it snagging and pulling and making the sizes of your stitches a little bit bigger or smaller. I also choose to pull mine from the center. The reason why I do this is because it makes it so that the skein will stay in one spot without it having to roll and tumble all over the place. This is also your preference of how you choose to use from your skein. We're going to get started here with a slip knot on our hook. So we just need a short tail. Wrap it around till you have like an X. Take your finger and thumb and pinch that X. And then take the working yarn, which goes to your skein, and pull up a loop through the center of the loop you made first. And then take the tail and pull it tight. We're going to place that on our hook and snug it up. Not too tight, but we're going to snug it up to our hook. Now I'm going to continue pulling out some more yarn and then we'll get started in just a minute. Please pause your video. I have my stitch marker ready so that way when we are ready to use it it'll be right there. So after we have our slip knot on our hook let's chain eight. So to make a chain go under the yarn and pull it through your loop. We're going to do that eight times. So here's two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, in the front of your chain, you'll notice that it looks like you have like a little V's. On the back, when you flip it over, you have these straight lines as well as a V as well. What we're going to be doing just for this row is we're going to go be into these back, they call them humps. In my opinion, when you put stitches into these back humps and then go around and use the front side, it makes it a more tighter um, at the, the joining of these two rows. So we don't count the loop on our hook. The first chain we're going to skip and in the second one we're going to place two single crochets. Now if you take your hook and go down into the center you can pick up that hoop bump. Take your hook and go through it. Take your yarn, go over the top and pull it through. Yarn over, aim your hook down and you can go through both of those loops on your hook and that was our first single crochet. And we want to take our stitch marker and right here where this V is we're going to place our stitch marker. In the same loop, the bump, we're going to add another single crochet. So go through, bring the yarn through, you got two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through both of those. Okay, so as we look here, you can see we got one, two, three, four, five, and six. Over the next five we want one single crochet per hump on the back of this chain. I'm on number three. We can stretch our work if it starts to curl a little bit. Here's number four. And the last one is for number five. You should have one more chain with the hump showing left. On this hump, or in this last stitch, we're going to be placing four single crochets. Now don't think, oh my gosh, how am I going to do that? <laughs> okay, we're going to place two on the hump and then we're going to come over here to the other side and place two on the front of the chain. I'm going to show you how to do that. So we want to pick up our hump. Sometimes it can be a little tricky. Yarn over, pull up a loop, Yarn over through the two on the hook. That's one. We still have one more to do. Okay, now bring your work, stretch it a little bit, bring your work and hold with your, with your right hand the tail. And then you can see how we have the little V's showing here on the other side. Go through that hole and draw up a loop, making sure that this one that you drew up a loop with, the knot is on the back side of that. Yarn over and through the two loops on the hook. And in that same stitch, we're going to do one more single crochet. Now if you look at it, you don't really see a hole because of the amount of stitches that are there. We place two on the hump, which is the back of the chain, and two on the front of the chain. Okay, now check real closely because we do have a stitch that's right here and a stitch right here. This is where our first single crochet going this way down the row is going to go. 
So we're going to do five single crochets, one in each stitch like we did on the other side. So here's one, two, three, four, and five. We still have one stitch left, and in that stitch we're going to place two single crochets, which is also known as an increase. Here's one and two. Okay, stretch it out a little bit, and this is what we have after completing the first row. Moving on to our next row, if you have to, place your finger and thumbnail through that stitch where the stitch marker is at, pull your stitch marker out, and make one single crochet into that stitch. Replace your, sing your stitch marker, and in that same space, one more single crochet. We did an increase right here. In our next stitch, an increase. Okay. Over the next five stitches, we want one per stitch. So we're going to do five single crochets. One, two, three, four, and five. Over the next four stitches, we're going to do four increases, which means we're going to be adding two single crochets per stitch. That's one increase. Two increases. Three increases. And four. Five single crochets along the next five stitches. One per stitch. One, two, three, four, and five. And if you're wondering why my hook is making noise, um, it is November <laughs> and um, I have two stories in my house, so I'm in the upper story, and it's really warm up here. Um, Virginia's having some crazy weather. It's like 75 degrees outside, <laughs> so my hands are kind of sweaty. <laughs> okay, so now we have two stitches left. We're going to do two increases. So two stitches, two single crochets per stitch. One and two. Okay, pull it out just a little bit. This completes our second row. This row, we're going to be adding our feet. So let's remove our stitch marker, and in our first stitch, we're going to do our increase. So here's one, replace that stitch marker, and two. In the next stitch, two single crochets. In the next stitch, one single crochet. Okay, so 
Now we're going to start making our feet. So to make our feet, we're going to chain five. But what I do to help make it easier, I chain two and I pinch that second chain, then I chain three. In this chain, the third one from the hook, we're going to be placing five double crochets. To make a double crochet, place your finger on the loop, yarn over the hook, take your hook and insert it into that third chain, pull up a loop, okay, and stretch it out a little bit, because sometimes when you go through chains, it doesn't always come out the exact same height that it needs to be. Okay, so yarn over, pull through two loops on the hook, yarn over, and pull through two more loops on the hook. What this does is it gives us twice the height of a single crochet. So we're actually making a larger in height stitch. So we're going to do this four more times, placing the hook in the same spot every time. So yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over through two, yarn over through two. Okay, three more times. Okay, now enlarge the loop a little bit, take your hook out, and fan out the, the five double crochets. On the very first one, you're going to place your hook into the top part of that stitch and go right through. Come over and pick up your loop, bring it down. And then bring that loop through the top stitch. <clears throat> bring your work. What we're going to do is in this chain two section here, we're not going to go into the chains, we're going to go around the chains. So we're going to take our hook, place your finger on the loop, go under. You see how we're going under and coming up on the other side, drop a loop and then snug it up, yarn over through two. That's our first single crochet. We're going to do that again. Go under, pull up a loop, and through the two. When I was making the first um, potato monster, I thought it would be best to go through the chains, but I found it was so difficult because once you put that popcorn in it, it kind of makes you lose some of your stitching there. All right, so let's open up. This is our base. So let's open up our base and see where that last single crochet was. And we can see it's right here. So we want to go to the next stitch and place one single crochet. And we're going to do a total of seven across. So one, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So here's one, one per stitch. This is three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, so this is what we have so far. We're on to our next foot. Okay, so chain two. Pinch that second chain. Chain three. And five double crochets into that 
third chain from the hook. So finger, yarn over, go into that chain, drop a loop, yarn over through two, yarn over through two. Okay, let me pause my video. I need some more yarn. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay, so let me go back. We're pinching the second one. We did our first double crochet. Finger on the loop, yarn over into that same spot. Let's pull up our second double crochet. Yarn over, pull up our third double crochet, here's our fourth, and our fifth. Okay, leave a little loop, come back to the first stitch and go through the top. Insert your hook into that loop that we enlarged and then take it and go through the top of the stitch. Okay, and then twist that around. And right here, two single crochets going around the chain. Snug up your stitches. When doing amigurumi, tension is very important. So here we are at our base again. Find that last stitch, which is right here. So into the next one, single crochet. That's our first one. We're going to need a total of 16 to make it to here. So one single crochet per stitch till you get to the last one before the stitch marker. Okay, I think you can do the single crochet, one per stitch, and I'll meet you there. Now I did want to point out, since this is straight stitching with no uh, increases, this is going to curl. That's okay. So you did not do anything wrong. Okay. So here we are. We've completed the 16 stitches. Let's remove our stitch marker and place one single crochet in that stitch and replace our stitch marker. We're going to do one, two, three, four for a total of five before we get to our foot. So I did one, two, three, and four. Let's see, one, two, three, four. Yeah, for a total of five. So you notice that your last stitch will be just before you started the chain on your foot. Now, take your chain or your foot and bring it forward and then look at this right here. You see you're going to have a tiny hole, but no stiff stuffing is going to come through it. Over to the left of that is your first stitch. Okay? Don't be confused by the single crochet that you put next to the uh, popcorn stitch right here. So let's put our hook. Usually it's easier to go with the hook aiming down to pick up those two across the top of the stitch, draw up a loop, yarn over, and complete that single crochet. This is our first one. We're going to do a total of seven till we get to this point right here. So here's one, two, three, four, 
five, six, and seven. And we're going to do the same thing like we did on the other foot. Bring it forward and then find that next single crochet. So here's that tiny little hole and we're going to go ahead and insert our hook, drop a loop, yarn over and finish off the single crochet. Okay, we have 16 stitches total before we get to our stitch marker again. So go ahead and do the 15 that's left that's needed and I'll meet you there. Now to add the height that we need, we're going to do 28 stitches per row around and we're going to do three rows. So we'll remove our stitch marker and this is the first stitch of the 28 single crochets per row. Go ahead and do that and I'll meet you there. So three rows, 28 stitches around. All right, so here we are at the end of the third row. Let's go ahead and take our scissors and cut a short tail of the blue. Now what we're going to do is remove your hook and go through those two loops that you had before you pulled the final yarn through. Bring your yarn to the front and let's go ahead and take our brown yarn with the short tail and pull it through those two loops. And if, you're, if you're like me, my tail is a little shorter so I pulled it and made it a little longer and then take your blue and go over the brown yarn remove your stitch marker I'm going to take both of these tails and we're going to crochet over them when we make our first single crochet in the next stitch so you see how the the tail, here's our working yarn, here's the tails, and this will help lock it down. We're going to go ahead and complete that first stitch. Then take the blue tail, pinch it back here, and then take the brown tail, pinch it. Okay? If it's if it moves, fine. If it doesn't, it's okay. Replace your first your stitch marker in the first stitch okay then this row we're going to be doing decreases so we did one single crochet in our next stitch one single crochet I didn't have my yarn pulled out <laughs> okay so after two single crochets we're going to do a decrease to do a decrease you see how the top of your stitch has a back loop and a front loop so over these next two stitches we're going to take our hook and go up through the first loop and then it's a it can be kind of tricky and then go up through the second stitch front loop okay so you see how you have the this is the one stitch and this is the next stitch so yarn over and pull through both of those loops so now we have two brown loops and we're gonna finish off that single crochet what this does is if you count here we have one two three and this took up the fourth stitch but we've only got one so it's kind of like in the middle here so we've decreased four stitches to three stitches now the repeat for this row is single crochet single crochet decrease okay so we can tell that because this one's pulled up we want to go to the next stitch 
So yarn in, I mean a hook in, draw up a loop, yarn over one single crochet, then the next stitch, one single crochet. Now over these next two stitches, just the front loop, one and one. Yarn over through the two loops, yarn over through the two loops on the hook. Okay, and so here we know this is it, so our next stitch is right here. One, next stitch, one, and the next stitch, our decrease. Okay, continue this around till you get the last two stitches, which will be a decrease. So did you end up with the last two as your decrease? See here's stretched a little bit, but that's okay. Let's take out our stitch marker. And in our first stitch, one single crochet. Yes, I'm, my hand's really sweaty. <laughs> okay, and in our next stitch, a decrease. All right, four single crochets, so one per stitch. Here's one, two, three, and four. And that should put you almost center here between the two legs. We're going to do one decrease. I tried to make it so that the decreases really wouldn't be in the front, uh, so that way most of it was here on the sides. Okay, and then four single crochet. Sounds like my hook is trying to sing you a yarn song, huh? <laughs> Alrighty. We're going to do another decrease. One. Two there. Okay, one, two, three, four. Huh. Oh, okay. So decrease two, I mean two single crochet. I was reading ahead on my instructions. Ugh. Okay, and then decrease. This is like the center back. Okay, and then two single crochets. Okay, so here's what we have so far. Okay, we have a nice little circle here. You should have a total of 17 stitches around. Now before we move on, let's go ahead and add some stuffing to the bottom here. Make sure your stitch marker won't fall out. Now, a lot of people have their own way of stuffing. What I choose to do is put an amount in there and then from the center I will spread it open and that will help take it to fill out the sides. You'll also have like a little hole in the middle, but we can add more stuffing on top of that. Okay, and push that out to the sides too. Alrighty, so let's move on. Oops, I put my bag on top of my yarn. <laughs> okay, so, don't want no straggler 
stuffing in our stitching. So for our next row, we're going to begin with a decrease. So remember, through the first two front loops of those stitches, pull it through, and then we've completed our single crochet. There's our first stitch. Seven single crochets. Here's one, two, three, four, five. You can tell my yarn is singing a very loud tune, huh? <laughs> okay, our next stitch will be a decrease. You know, to be honest with you, I think I'd rather hear my yarn, I mean my hook sing, than me sing. What do you think? <laughs> um, I was adding background music to my videos on what I thought was copyright free, but every time I added it, YouTube would say, um, you need to take the background music out. So this is why we're listening to my hook and, my, and me talk. So, sorry about that. All right, we have six stitches left, so we're going to do six single crochet. Okay, you can see our starting to get a little neck here just like what our little friend over here has this next row will be 15 single crochets around when we did the decrease on the last row we did it twice that means we went from 17 to 15 so 15 single crochets around and I will meet you there. Please pause your video. This next row we will start to add some arms. So let's take our stitch marker out and do one single crochet. Replace our stitch marker and then chain 10. 1, 2, 3. I'm going to spare you the noise, so please continue till you have 10 chains. Now, like we did before on the foot, try not to twist your chain. We want to count down three chains. 1, 2, 3. And in that third chain, we're going to place uh, five double crochets. So yarn over and into that third one. Let's do five double crochets. Okay, I have one, two, three, four. I need one more. I'm starting to wonder if I should change my hook. <laughs> but I don't have another size seven hook. Okay, so we're gonna enlarge. Go to the first stitch. Pull that loop through. Okay, now you would think that after going through three, you're going to have seven. We're going to do something a little different here. We're going to take the first single crochet and we're going to go around the chain. 
this will kind of help block it up there so it looks a little bit better I'm gonna snug it up okay and then from down here here's the top of your stitch one two three four five six right here so we're going to place one single crochet per chain so here's one two three four five and six okay seven single crochets one two three four five six seven okay we're gonna do this arm again chain ten five double crochets pull the loop up into the first stitch pull it tight single crochet around the chain count up six and then six single crochets go ahead and do that so you don't have to listen to my hook and I feel bad because I work so hard on making these things for this video but I don't want you complaining about my hook I am really sorry about the noise it's making for this so please forgive me on that Two double crochets, <clears throat> three, four, and five. Okay, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two single crochets, three, four. five and six so I turned the air conditioner on <laughs> it's November <laughs> we don't have air conditioning on in November anyway so I turned the air conditioner on so hopefully that'll be okay all right so into the next uh, let's see we're gonna do seven one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven single crochets, and that'll complete this row. Okay. 
Okay, so we can stuff some more into the body before we keep moving on up. So let's add some more stuffing and then we'll continue our crocheting. Alrighty, our little guy's coming along. Our little potato monster. Okay, so let's place our hook back on. We're going to place one single crochet. Now, as before, we're going to take our arm and go forward with it. And you can see right here is our next stitch. So we're going to, here's our first of seven. So here's number one. We're not going to count this one back here because this one was before, before the arm. This one's after the arm. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, move the arm forward. And here's our next single crochet. And to finish this row off, we're going to be doing seven single crochets. Of course, every time I move my stuffing bag, I always put it on top of the yarn I just pulled out. <laughs> Alrighty. So, after we've done that, we're going to do two rows of 15 stitches. So, 15 and then 15. Two rows. Go ahead and pause your video, and I'll meet you when you've completed that. So at the end of the 15 for the second row, let's enlarge our loop and turn it so that we have the hands and the feet in front. Don't stuff just yet. We're going to be adding our first row of eyes. Now I haven't really decided which ones I want on the bottom or top, but I think I'll put the pink on the bottom. So I'm going to grab two safety eyes and the two safety backings. I'll put the purples on later. So we're going to take these. There's holes in the center. The safety backing is still long enough. Okay, so we want to count down three rows. One, two, three. And count over two. Maybe you have to count over one. Let's see. Count over one. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Let's put our backing on. If you like that, that placement. Otherwise, I don't think, no, that ain't going to work. So let's place our safety backing on our first one. There we go. Make sure it it locks in. And here's for our second one. Go. 
Okay. There we go. Sometimes you need the safety eye helper, but this one is locked in right here. So now that we have our first eyes and we can stuff some more, let's go ahead and stuff it. When you stuff it, make sure that you don't feel like holes. You want to make sure that it feels kind of solid. And if you have to push it down, push it down. It's okay. So I'm just going to leave mine at this. I'm about two rows down. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do... is we're going to be adding the ears on the side. So we're going to do two single crochets over the next two stitches. Okay, need to pull my camera back. So please pause your video. So moving on chain four. One, two, three, four. And we're going to do what is known as a pico completion of this particular section. So we have our chain and right here at the top of our single crochet we want to pull into the top and into the body of our single crochet. We're going to pull a loop through and then we're going to take that loop and continue with the loop that's on the hook. That's called a pico. is a chain with basically a slip stitch. We're going to do seven single crochet. Whoops. Slipped right out, didn't it? Okay, so here's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, chain four. and through the top and the body of that single crochet pull the yarn through and through the loop on the hook. We have six single crochets left to complete this row. Okay, and so this is what we have. Their little ears on the side. He's getting so cute! <laughs> now, this row, we do go behind the pico as well. So, we are going to do one single crochet. and two. Okay, so pull that pico forward and you can see the next chain. Seven single crochets and I'll meet you there. Then like before, pull our pico forward and then we will do six single crochets.
Okay. Okay, so we're going to come down two rows and right in here, see basically at the same row at the ears, we're going to attach our second set of eyes. <clears throat> So one, two, and in that row, and then our second eye, we're going to do one row of 15 go. single crochet around. Let's put our stitch, I mean our and safety I'll meet you there. on. Now I did want to point out something. Um, if you choose to give this to a child that has um, a tendency to chew on things, you might want to sew some eyes on instead. Because if they chew on it, anything is possible. And I don't want to see anybody get hurt. So please consider um, using felt eyes or something. If the child does not chew on things, these are fine for the child to go ahead and use. Let's go ahead and stuff to the top. We have one more row of crochet. And then we are almost done with this little uh, pump, uh, potato monster. Yeah, I have many children of my own, and I never had a problem with my kids chewing on things, but everybody's different. I mean, my kids didn't suck on their fingers and really have dolls and stuff that they hung on to. I mean, they had things that was important to them, but uh, one thing that they did not do was chew on things. So just take that into consideration so that these safety eyes are not a hundred percent guarantee. You can try all kinds of things to secure the backing, but still they manage to find a way to pull them off if they really want them off. All right, so now that we got that, let's go ahead and we're going to do our final row, which is single crochet, decrease, single crochet, decrease, single crochet, decrease. And I'll show you that once. And you're going to go around till you meet back at your stitch marker. And then we will close this guy up. So here's, sorry I was out of camera. <laughs> so let's pull this. Okay. So single crochet, decrease. Continue that around. I'll meet you at the end of the row. You should have 10 stitches across the top. So what I'd like for you to do now is pull some yarn so that you have oh, about 20-25 inches of yarn. And let's pull that tail through that last stitch. and then snug it up. You can take your stitch marker out because we're done with that now. Now some people choose to use their hook to pull the yarn through the last set of stitches. I prefer to use my yarn needle. So I'm going to go in and out the front loops 
of the stitches around. When I pull it, I do not want to pull it tight. I just want to pull it so that way I still have an opening and I can put some more stuffing in here until I'm ready to seal it up. So here Okay, so when I stopped, I stopped right where my stitch marker was at. I'm going to add a little bit of stuffing for right here. So he can keep his fluffiness. Okay, once everything is stuffed in there and it feels good, go ahead and pull that tight. And then what I like to do is I like to come across the front and go back to the back and that'll help lock that in. But we're not done yet. So with our hook, you want to find the front here. With our hook, you want to come over and just go under a stitch and we're going to take the yarn and pull it through. Not all the way. We want to form a loop. Okay. Chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. Twist it slightly and then come over here and pick up another stitch. It doesn't have to be right next to it. But you do want to pull up, pull up another stitch. Bring the yarn through and then snug that up so that you don't have any looseness back here. Yarn over and complete that single crochet. And then we're going to tighten that up again. Most people do slip stitches, but I find that the single crochet is what I'm looking for, for the look I'm trying to achieve. Now chain five again, two, three, four, and five. We're going to come over here to the center front, drop a loop, snug it up. When you're on camera it's cumbersome, when it's in front of your lap it's easy. <laughs> Okay, so let's yarn over and pull it through both of those loops. Okay, chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. And we're going to come over here to where we started. We're going to do a single crochet right next to that one we started off with. All right, and pull it all the way through. Now, even though this is a no-sew pattern, um, most of this is for cosmetic look. So here we've pulled it through. Let's go to the other side so we can complete and join the look. All right, so we're going to go down here. Go down a couple of rows, and I'm going to do an overhand knot. Then, to bury my ends, I like to go through the middle of stitches. This helps hold it so it doesn't work its way out later on. And then you can go in and bury it. 
and then we can cut it. So our little guy is ready for his face. Let's go ahead and uh, put some black yarn on our needle and then we can put our smile and our eyebrows on. Now to add our smile, we're going to come down, insert the needle, and then come up one row above the blue, mostly right under the arm. Leave a short tail. And then we're going to go over here to the other side. And whatever look that you're trying to achieve, take the yarn and go with it and see how it looks. Come up. If you're trying to do the same look, you come up to the second row, but come down because we're going to hold this. If you tried to leave it, it wouldn't have the same look. So we're going to kind of like tack it down. So I'm going down in the same area of where I came up, and I'm coming up now down here, so I'm going to go down here pretty soon. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to go over here. And this helps hold my smile in place, even if it is a little crazy looking. <laughs> okay, so when I finish to where I'm going, I'm going to go back to the hole I came in at, and I'm going to go out it. Of course, you're going to find a lot of polyfill is going to follow you along the way. But it's okay. So I'm going to have a little crazy smile on this guy. Nothing's always perfect. Then, tie a square knot. Insert your hook. Go in through that same hole that both of them came in and out of. Fold the yarn over your hook and pull it in. And this is what you call burying your ends. Okay. Since we have black on the hook, we're going to do some eyebrows. So this time, I think I'm going to come right here in the center. But I'm going to go over to the side. Okay, and I'm going to go across. I'm going to go under. And then I'm going to come up here. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And then I'm going to work my way down <laughs> to where I started from. Let's see if I can get that needle. Oops, a little too far over. That's the nice thing about having these yarn needles that don't have sharp points. At least you won't poke yourself real bad. Okay, here we go. And make sure your yarn is right before you finish it off. Okay, you see his little eyebrows? And 
make sure everything's snug now like I said before you're going to be pulling um, excessive uh, fiber fill out as, as well okay and we're going to go in here and bury all those tails there we go buried them right in okay so the last thing we need is some teeth now because my smile looks kind of off I'm gonna put some teeth up here each smile can be different whatever you choose to do so place a short amount maybe eight inches of yarn of white on your needle and I will meet you there please pause your video so we're going to insert and bury our uh, white as well now when we do teeth I like to do a little triangle look so I'm gonna go across I'm gonna come down hopefully it's at my mouth line yeah so the teeth look like they have little points to them gives it a uh, look <laughs> okay so let's do the other tooth and we are almost done and I know you're excited about that ready to have somebody love and have, say oh this is my little pet monster <laughs> okay and then we're gonna go out here there we go two teeth So, I know this is at the end of the video. I really do hope you had a fun time. And I hope you don't you didn't get irritated because of my squeaky hook. <laughs> at least I didn't sing, right? Um and I hope you enjoy some of these videos that I create thinking, you know, I like it. My kids is going to love it. Let's we'll see if we can Raise this up. Alrighty. So here's our little potato monster with four eyes and a funny looking mouth. Let's show you, let me show you his, his buddy over here. Look at all those eyes. So I hope you have fun making this. I hope whoever loves it enjoys it. If you use a smaller yarn, you can make it into a keychain. Same pattern, just smaller hook and smaller yarn. So, till next time, thank you for visiting with me, and bye-bye.